Okay, so today we're going to talk about the best way to perk up your weapons. We're going to try to answer that question for a variety of different wep uh, weapons and go over a range of strategies and tactics that I use in my head that I go through a checklist when I'm looking at a weapon to determine uh, what that what the optimal perk loadout is going to be for that weapon. You know, we're going to we're going to talk about the whole mental process that I go through whenever I look at each different weapon and uh, and what constitutes the best of the best. Now, there is quite a few different strategies uh, that you can go with, but we're going to be approaching this from my perspective of uh, what I think the most valuable thing in the game is uh, for each weapon. Keep in mind that there are a lot of different personal preferences and strategies and perk loadouts that people will prefer, but today we're talking about mine. All right, guys, if you like what we're doing on this channel, both on Twitch and on YouTube, uh, please consider using our supporter creator code. It helps us so much to be able to continue doing what we're doing and keep on making these videos. So thank you so much for all the support, guys. All right, let's get right into it. So um, there are a lot of different weapons uh, in the game and a lot of different styles of, of, uh, of perk loadouts that you could potentially use. Now, one of the main ones that I use all the time is of course my Stazroot the Third. Now, when when considering how to perk a weapon up, you kind of have to look at what your options are within the weapon itself. Like this one here, you could choose crit rate, crit damage, attack speed, damage. You know, all are pretty good options. You know, each one has its own merits. Uh, but for me, when I'm looking at a sword, my number one priority is to make it as fast as possible. So when I'm looking at a sword, I'm like, how can I make this faster? How many attack speed perks does this thing have? So when you look at the uh, the Stazroth the Third, there are two attack speed perks, one here and one here. These are the only two that you can put attack speed on. Um, and that, you know, so I, I went and immediately did that. I, I maxed it out, maximum attack speed. Then I look at this one here and I have armor, durability, light bleach, movement speed, and heavy attack efficiency. Well. I don't value heavy attack efficiency at all. I don't value durability at all. I think those are worthless. I think Life Leech is a completely garbage talent. Uh, I think that armor gives you, like, the amount of life that the armor saves you is way more than the amount that you will get by Life Leeching ever. Life Leech is just trash. So really, the only two options for um, a weapon like this is movement speed or armor. Now. As you guys probably know, if you watched my my reviews, I I support armor, armor over movement speed. Both of them are really good options. If you want to use movement speed and just avoid the damage completely, that is a valid strategy. Uh, in my opinion, armor is better because there is a lot of unavoidable damage that comes at you. Uh, pitchers, gunslingers, blasters, ranged attacks, smoke clouds, you know, poison clouds, um, lobbers everything they you get hit and there's nothing you can do about it no matter how fast you move or how smart you move you're going to take supplemental damage all the time regardless of how fast you are and that's where armor really really makes you survive that extra time it takes to get your life back and keep on struggling through so for me when you see this kind of loadout um, armor is the number one movement speed is a viable option um, as for the element, um, for swords, I always take element physical. If you only have one sword, physical is the most important element that you can possibly use because uh, swords need to kill blasters. Blasters are the number one threat on the battlefield. If you don't kill a blaster fast, the blaster is going to melt you because you're vulnerable. You're using a sword. You're out in the open. You need to kill them fast. So physical to kill the mist monsters, take down the blasters, take down those uh, takers, go after, you know, the lobbers and the propane. You know, the physical is the number one thing that you need to to work on. Uh, and then, you know, you can get elements after that if you want to min-max. As you, as you can see, I have many, many swords. Fire, nature, physical, water. I even have nature and physical for, uh, for, for bright core because I'm working on a bright core set and a sunbeam set so that I can have everything. It's my uh, my pet project so that is the the how i approach you know the stazworth and swords in general um 
the ideal and and this this also keep in mind this is under the assumption that you have you have a um a damaged like the uh the bottom perk the bottom perk if you have a weapon that causes affliction and you have to the ability to choose damage to afflicted targets it's a no-brainer you you pretty much have to take that right it's uh if you look at all the other ones your, your options are damage to miss monsters and bosses trash 36 percent to miss monsters and bosses or 45 percent to everything right it's a no-brainer slowed and snared well we don't have slowed and snared stunned and staggered well we're not going to use that we've got afflicted so we use afflicted if you have slowed and snared use slowed and snared uh the other two use miss monsters and bosses when you're using a really slow firing gun where uh you know hitting the target before killing it is not really a good idea right if you have a like a like a sniper rifle or a deagle something that shoots really slow and hits really hard you're not going to be hitting an enemy more than once or more than twice uh, and because of that the first shot does causes the affliction but doesn't get the bonus the second shot is going to get the bonus so if, as you can see if you shoot twice then you get a 45 percent damage bonus whereas with miss monsters and bosses if you shoot twice against a miss monster or a boss you're getting a 60 72 percent 72 percent damage bonus right so having having a damage bonus on every single shot you take versus having you know a bonus on uh every shot after the first shot that requires that you're using a fast firing gun if you're not using a fast firing gun then uh you know, you might as well be going with damage to missed monsters and bosses because there's a more relevant type of damage. So now on the opposite end, there there are weapons that have um, status effects like affliction and slowed and snared. There are also weapons that don't have status effects like the spectral blade. Now the spectral blade is a truly special weapon. It's the most powerful sword in the entire game. Again, I looked down here and I was like, how much attack speed can I get? Well, there's one there. Uh, there's one there and there's one there. So I got, I, there was three attack speeds. I actually chose to scale back the attack speed on this one so that I could get the crit combo. If you have one crit rate, one crit damage, that means you have a massive, massive damage boost to that weapon. If I took crit rate without crit damage, I would crit often, but I would not crit hard. If I had crit damage without crit rate, I would, uh, I would crit hard, but I would very rarely get the crits. So you have to have one of each. So because of that, I decided to sacrifice one of my attack speed perks uh, and go with, uh, you know, the huge, huge damage bonus. So that's where, you know, you have a 43% chan uh, crit chance, 185% crit damage, 0.29 attack speed. So really, really fast crits, huge crit chance, great crit damage. And then, of course, physical on swords because you need to kill those blasters. So that is the that was my my thought process going through this one here. Um, you know, as much attack speed as possible, and then realizing, oh, we can get crit on this weapon because there's no status effect, right? There's no uh, there's no damage to slowed and snared on this weapon. There, you can use damage to slowed and snared right here, but you don't you don't need to. You'll actually do way more damage if you can combo with crit. And the thing with the damage is slowed and snared is that I would have had to have given up the attack speed, right? So if I'm going to give up attack speed, I, it better be for something, you know, substantial. And, and crit rate and crit damage together is really substantial. So that's how I came, uh, you know, around the conclusion with this one is as much attack speed as possible. And then, oh, wait, we're going to scale back one of the attack speeds and make sure we get a crit combo on this weapon so that's uh that's the spectral blade now there are other lots of other strategies as well we're going to cover some guns gun tactics uh guns have all kinds of crazy tactics now with uh again there are two types of weapons there are actually there's three types of weapons there are those with status effects like this one here causes affliction does damage to affliction right with weapons like this um you know, you, you look at it and you're like, okay, let's take a look at the inside of this gun and see what our options were. So this one, you have crit rate, crit damage, both excellent options. Um, fire rate, uh, excellent option if you want to lower the amount of damage that you do with your magazine, but raise the amount of damage you do per second. 
Uh, fire rate's a really good option. Um, reload speed, never. Never take... Always take damage over over anything else. So crit crit rate, crit damage, damage, fire rate, those are, those are your most important stats. Um, and of course, on a gun, every time I look at a gun, the thought that goes through my mind is one crit rate and as much crit damage as I can possibly stuff onto this gun. So I looked at this gun, I was like, okay, there's my crit rate right there. How much crit damage can I get? One, nope, no crit damage there. Element energy and no crit damage there. So that's that's the, the strategy with weapons, is you want to have one crit rate and as much crit damage as you can possibly stuff into that weapon. It's so crucial. Crit rate plus tons of crit damage is the way to win at this game. That is how you get the craziest damage, just slaughter everything. Um, the faster the fire, you know, the faster firing guns are much more you know, benefited by, you know, heavy, heavy crit weapons uh, because it can it can minimize the, the crit variance, making your damage more consistent and really do the maximum amount of damage as you can possibly do per magazine. And that's really important. That's what crit does is it gives the maximum damage that you can possibly get per mag. So this one here, because I could only get one crit weight rate and one crit damage, um, then I went down to the, the utility perk. I'm like, okay, uh, so durability is trash. Weapon stability is trash. So this really comes down to mag size and reload. So the, the tactic behind mag size and reload is very simple. If you have a big magazine, make it bigger. If you don't have a big magazine, take reload speed. So to understand this better, you can think of it like the old Betsy. So this is a Think of the magazine size as a 100% damage bonus for the sake of easy to understand numbers. If you have if you have a 100 100% damage or magazine size bonus, and you have an old Betsy with one shot in the mag, 100% more magazine size of one is another one, so two. So when you have one one mag, a one bullet mag, and you get 100% more ammo, you're just getting one extra shot. Whereas if you have a magazine with 100 bullets and you get 100% more magazine size, you are getting 100 bullets. So the bigger the magazine, the more benefits you get from mag size. So you got to figure out where, where that line is, where it's uh, still worthwhile upgrading the magazine size because you know if the mag is too small, it's not really going to make a big impact on the weapon. So that's where I picked, obviously, with this weapon, has a massive magazine size. We took mag size to amplify that even more. So that's you go one crit rate. Uh, we could only get one crit damage. So we took magazine size over reload speed. Um, we took energy on this one. And then, uh, and then of course, we have no option here. This one is uh, already decided for us. It's an affliction weapon. So naturally, we're going to take damage to afflicted targets. If it was a snare, we would do damage to slowed and snared. So that is the that is the the conditional gun, the affliction damage one, or the slowed and snared damage one. Now the other kind of gun is just your straight up crit gun, like the Lynx here. As you can see with the Lynx, the Lynx has um, when you look at a gun, you do the whole thing. You're like, okay, one crit rate, and as much crit damage as I can possibly stuff onto this gun. So there's our crit rate right there, and then. Nope, no crit damage, no crit damage. Yep, we got crit damage. Oh, yeah, we got another crit damage. And this one does uh, affliction. So then we have only, you know, we're going to take element energy or whatever. And then we look at the uh, the utility perk and we're like, okay, so durability is worthless. Stability is worthless. And it comes back down to reload and mag size. Okay, so uh, 30 magazine, not that big, not that impressive. So forget it. We're going to go with reload speed. Reload speed is going to have a bigger impact on this gun than, you know, a puny mag size bonus. Um, that's just, it's not enough, right? It's not enough. So we decided to go with reload speed. So that's how it works. One crit rate, as much crit damage as you can possibly fit on the gun. And then you get to pick between reload and speed, reload speed and mag size. And you, based on, you know, how big the mag actually is. Now, there's one other gun that I have to show you. Uh, the the Star Wars Squire. This is a really good example of, you know, when you're looking at a gun, you're like, okay, this is the only gun in the game that you can go, oh, hey, one crit rate, 
three crit damage, and then we threw some energy on there. So this gun here is uh, it hits like a truck. Now there are downsides to running guns with one crit rate and three crit damage, namely the reload time on this gun is 2.7 seconds, which is horrible. You only have one shot in the mag, so you shoot the gun, it hits the target, if it crits, the target dies. If it doesn't crit, you, you cry. <laughs> and then you uh, you reload your gun. So uh, a good option with this one would have been to turn one of the, the one of the crit damage perks into a reload speed. We have a reload speed there. We have a reload speed there. That would have dramatically reduced the horribleness of the reload time on this gun. However, this gun for me is a meme weapon. And I really like having, you know, a gun that I that is super, super dumb. And super RNG and you shoot things and you get these huge giant crits it's just really cool it's a fun weapon uh, you can use element energy or you can use element physical if you want to get even higher hits uh, you can go and get a huge damage bonus against physical enemies with the uh, the physical talent but uh, yeah that's so that's the thought process again behind how you how you perk a weapon one crit rate as much crit damage as you can possibly get and then choose what utility perks best work for the weapon so that's that's really it. That's all there is to it. You know, there's some anomaly weapons out there like the Obliterator. Uh, the Obliterator has b a bizarre perk loadout. You have your uh, your one crit rate, right? This one is the crit rate, or sorry, there's crit rate right there. Your your options were crit rate or a bunch of garbage. So you take crit rate. Then you take uh, you look at this one. You're like, okay, so as much crit damage as I can possibly get. So we got a crit damage there. We got a crit damage there. And then this one's like, oh, geez, what do I do here? Headshot damage, mag size, stability, or rating. Well, stability is worthless. Uh, magazine size is worthless because there's only four shots in the mag. So that leaves you to choose between crit rate and headshot. And I typically don't use headshot at all because I, I give it to defenders. Defenders can't get headshots. So headshot's kind of a waste of talent. So, you know, the headshot's only good if I intend to really go for headshots on every single target. That leaves me crit rate, that's it. It just leaves you with crit rate. So typically I will actually go with a double crit rate on this gun, which is usually a huge no-no, right? So, you know, that's different strategies that can, that can cross your mind and that you can use. Uh, the other one is you can go to the other crit rate and choose between impact, reload speed, and fire rate. Obviously, reload speed would be not bad because this has a 3.5 reload, which is pretty terrible. Uh, a reload speed perk could make this gun quite a lot, you know, nastier if you want to fire it quickly. But typically, this gun is, uh, you know, you fire it a few times, you kill your targets, and then you have lots of time to reload. So reload's not usually a problem. But again, there are different ways to run this gun. So that's one of those anomalies where you get to kind of pick, you know, strange builds. Like I almost always run my uh, my obliterator with. As you can see, double crit rate, double crit damage. Because this is my defender loadout. So there's no point in me putting on uh, like fire rate or anything because most of my defenders have fire rate already built into them. Uh, and even if they don't, it doesn't really super matter. Now the other gun is the, um, <laughs> the conditional crit gun, which is the Bobcat. Well, did you look at this? This one is a crit rate and a double crit damage and... A conditional afflicted gun so this one has no utility park on it it's just pure power crit rate crit damage crit damage and damage to afflicted targets it's a very unique weapon it's one of the old it's just like it's incredibly rare to have a build that looks like this uh, I think it might even be the only weapon in the entire game that has you know full crit damage and still you know doesn't have uh, yeah, you still have the the conditional. So, really, really cool weapon. But that 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 pretty much covers everything. That's your all of your weapons, all of your guns. You're always going to be looking at it with the same thing in mind: one crit rate, as much crit damage as you can, and then choose between reload speed and mag size. Uh, with swords, you want to go with uh, as much attack speed as you possibly can. And if you can get a super fast weapon that has crit rate and crit damage on it, you do even more damage. So. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for the question. Uh, you know, my Twitch crew uh, approached me with this one and asked me to uh, really go over the, the strategy behind how I 
look at perking my guns and uh, you know how to determine for themselves uh, when looking at a gun how do I figure out how to get the best the best loadout so huge shout out to my twitch crew we're streaming over 18 hours a day seven days a week no days off rocking 81 hour marathons every single weekend we're streaming all day every day guys save the world so thank you so much for uh for being a part of the bash core and supporting us on twitch and youtube and helping us grow uh it means the world guys so make sure you like and subscribe leave that thumbs up comment down below let me know what your strategies are for when you go to perk guns and what your you know what you tend to lean towards as a preference now i'd be really curious to see what your guys' thought process is when you do these as well so thank you so much for all the support guys see you in the next video <laughs> oh yeah